Hey guys, it's Dennis here with Revog Games. This is the Revog Games podcast. My name is Dennis, like I said. I'm also joined by... Josh Revere all the way in South Africa. Yeah, it's a different time. Usually we shoot, like I shoot this my morning, your night time, but uh, this yeah. time around we're doing my night time and, and, and your morning. Yes, I, I'm still scratching the sand out of my eyes here, but I'm <laughs> I'm ready. I'm looking forward to it, you know? Um, yesterday, we were actually supposed to shoot yesterday, but our, our schedules didn't align. But yesterday, for me, was a one-year uh, anniversary of when I started to go into a pandemic lockdown. Uh, that's like when they kind of put in the order, like, okay, you you've got to start, you know, working from home and not doing this and that or whatever so i i was you know at the office when i i heard the news and i packed up my stuff and brought it all home and i've been home working ever since so it's, it's been a it's whole year it's crazy as well like you've um you've drastically changed in the past year as well you've gotten a big your hair is longer you got yeah. you got a bigger beard you know it's yeah it's it's crazy it's been a whole year i saw your facebook post yeah yeah and then I don't know, lots of stuff has happened since that year. I mean, we not just I mean, obviously, uh, you know, uh, in my post, I was talking about myself, but then also in the whole world, like mm. we packed in like five years worth of stuff in one year. Um, that's so true in all terms the, of like events and things. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like, all the craziness that's going on. I mean, we had. Do a, you remember a, that very brief period of 2020 when there were murder bees or murder hornets? Yeah, and it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, and it wasn't a big. It deal. wasn't a big deal. Yeah, because we, uh, you know, was funny. we were dealing with uh, COVID and like, I don't know, just between all the. Well, so yeah, we, we had the, the election. Reporters. We have like the the insurrection. We had like protests. We have, you know, I mean, you know, unfortunately, right now there's a lot of uh, anti Asian uh, sentiment uh, in the United States. And uh, there was like a uh, killing uh, recently, a shooting, kind of a mass shooting yeah. recently. I've been meaning to talk to you about that, but we'll talk about that after the podcast. Yeah. So, so just like, there's a like, lot of sure you're OK, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, when you I know go okay. out, it's a little more um, what you might call it. Uh, What's a little more you know? on on edge th than normally I would be. But yeah. um, do, you, do you feel like you got to walk around in soft focus? You know, soft focus is that thing where it's like you're looking forward but you're more aware of your peripherals you know like you're not zoned in in front of you oh i'm looking all over the place <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and so trying to like, listen yeah. for stuff too uh, exactly yeah it's like you're living your life yeah. in soft focus you're like always aware of what's behind you or right next to you just in case yeah, yeah. but yeah so anyways that's uh, a whole year now and we're still not done even though some people are trying to celebrate in in, in miami right now uh there's spring break and miami has put a curfew on because all these people are out there just drinking partying and like acting, well yeah well, didn't spring break fool. last last year spring break in miami was like a huge super spreader event wasn't it so they were like it was but at least it was like in the beginning when at least some people were taking it more seriously so there were people out there but it wasn't that many and then now okay. people people think it's over when it's not over and they're just true yeah out Everyone's there like, like there's crazy. a vaccine we'll be fine <laughs> plus plus they oh, had man. a whole year of like repressed like they want to go out and you know true. it's a whole year to to party but anyways um this is a, a gaming podcast so we should talk about games um you know uh nothing like i always mentioned that uh, pick up basketball vr getting a lot of good feedback on that a lot of people playing the game loving it we're trying to fix it and improve it and all that good stuff so if you have a VR system, check it out on Steam. It's in early access, and we're gonna have a Quest version uh, probably in a few months. But we're trying to to work on on the Steam version. Uh, but anyways, there's a lot of you know news, uh, video game news coming out. Uh, let's start off with the first thing. Uh, the one of the big thing things that happened that we kind of knew about. We didn't know the details though. Was uh, Marvel's Avengers, uh, and you know they were going to we knew ahead of time they were going to give away not give away but if you if you owned the copy on the last generation PS4 Xbox 1 you you were going to get a free upgrade to Xbox Series X or you know uh PS5 and so we we knew that part of it 
but then they started to talk about okay their first the first dlc the operation hawkeye future hawkeye's future uh what's it called imperfect um which kind of like almost it looks like, like some sort of alternate universe type of thing where you have Hawkeye, you got this Hulk with a beard. Um, and then they talked about some, some events coming. There's going to be a tachyon anomaly where they're going to allow players multiplayer on online multiplayer to play as the same character. So before it's like, if someone picked Iron Man, then you couldn't be Iron Man. You had to, you know, be Hulk or, or whatnot. Um, but they're going to do an event where it's like, okay, anyone can be anyone. And that's cool. In the campaign, you still, you, you can't, I don't think you can do that though. It's just for the online multiplayer. Um, you know, there, there's a bunch more DLCs coming. I know that one of the big things was, well, two big things. They talked about the Wakanda expansion, which now Black Panther is coming, but that's not coming into summer, probably end of summer. Um, we got a good look at that. They had a little trailer for that. And then um, the news that Spider-Man, which is going to be a PS exclusive, is not going to be here until after the summer. So uh, people and are also, kind of waiting. They have, they have confirmed that Spider-Man will definitely be coming before Black Panther as well. So okay. Black Panther is going to be a while then. Yeah. So be probably uh, after summer. I guess the big question I want to ask you is, well, first I don't remember you didn't you you didn't play the game yet, have you? No, I did. I did watch you guys play it quite okay. a bit because you guys streamed quite a bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I got me to vicariously and, experience it through you guys. Me and Dorian played it. Uh, Caboose played it. Um, and me and Caboose actually did a review on it, talking about how the single player was like, uh. Overall, it was pretty good. Uh, it's repetitive in the middle parts, but in the beginning, it was fun. And then in the very end, they saved all the best stuff for the end. But uh, anyways, the online multiplayer has not fared so well. Uh, it's one of those things mm. that they thought, you know, was going to kind of honestly to pay for <laughs> pay for the game. Um, because their games as a service was not much of a service. <laughs> yeah. So, the, you know, the game so, sold okay it, it wasn't like a big huge uh hit so the whole you know revenue that they were expecting was off of the online multiplayer not that you had to pay for the online multiplayer but obviously this day and age it's all about the you know all the different transactions uh, yeah. yeah microtransactions that you can do skins you know skins and and, and whatnot and different aesthetics that you uh, outfits and costumes and, and stuff like that um so but in terms of online multiplayer avengers just didn't didn't uh really bring people in and, and and less and less people started playing it and this is kind of like they're trying to reboot it in a sense kind of like how we talked about last week about anthem even though anthem got canceled the whole anthem next thing that they were planning they were trying to revive the franchise and revive the player base yeah to come in eventually they decided it just wasn't worth it which Obviously, really sucks like i know that's not what we're talking about right now mm -hmm. but i just because we're not gonna have an opportunity to talk about this again um it sucks that they did that i thought about it again yesterday because now that ea plays officially like completely a part of game pass anthem is gonna have so many new players like it probably yeah. already has had so many new players in the past two days just because of xbox uh. game pass but it doesn't matter now. Like if they, like if they, honestly, if they just waited, if they just delayed the the update, they mm -hmm. may have even, it may have been better for them because they're gonna have more players now, even though the game's doomed. You know. Yeah. Anyways, moving, uh, going back to what you said. Sorry. Yeah. So I mean, what do you think about this? I mean, I know you haven't even played it, but what do you think about all these announcements? And two, is it enough to get people to play the game? I mean, for me, like since the uh, campaign was the thing that I liked the most these DLCs that have, you know, story bits and uh, stuff like that. I'll definitely come back and play those. Um, will it get me back on the online multiplayer? That's maybe. I mean, I think that's their kind of gamble, right? It's like, okay, people playing DLCs, they'll get them back into the mode and maybe they'll happen to jump back into online multiplayer and maybe that's, they'll get hooked again or something or, or maybe they've changed it enough that people can get hooked on it. So... Uh, mm. What do you think? Well, first of all, I, I got two different thought trains here because you asked me two different you asked okay. me two different questions. I got two different 
answers for you though what do i think of this brilliant like brilliant plan brilliant marketing is it going to work i don't know you know what i mean mm -hmm. i will say though what i think of it is amazing like this this whole uh the roadmap that i'm looking at it's pretty it's pretty smart like the tachyon anomaly event i think that's gonna have that should bring back some people because i'm sure a few people were annoyed by the fact i'm well, not annoyed but it's like i mean I play I play a lot of games where it's like you can only be one character for that round, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's Avengers or Valorant, for instance, you know what I mean? And you you kind of you, you don't get upset, but it does suck when someone picks the character that you're most used to playing. So I think it's going to be nice, this Tachyon Anomaly event where anybody can be as many characters as they You can have five Tony Starks, you know what I mean? Uh, why not? I like that. The Red Room Takeover, I like the idea of that too, because they're kind of tying it in with the Black, uh, the Black Widow movie coming out. Mm -hmm. So it's like... They're tying in the the game with the actual MCU itself, which is quite sick. Uh, the Cosmic Cube event is also going to be. Is it the Cosmic Cube event, or is it? Yeah. One of these well, are like I based off a, of. Um, I think it's a DLC because it's it, it's based on like a, a post credit scene. A, well, a character during the main campaign and a post credit scene yeah. that kind of led towards you thinking there's more to the story. Whether you know, I think we were talking about whether it's all it was tied in a... together that's what I, I do like how all the events mm -hmm. are related to the game or they're related to the mcu you know what i mean mm -hmm. like do, doing the red room takeover around the same time the black uh, black widow movie comes out that's smart one of these i forget which one it is it's not the cosmic cube it could be the other one it takes place pretty much right after the the hawkeye dlc so it's like that ties in with the dlc that you're going to get so the way that they've planned this roadmap out i would say is very smart like it's very smart it's good for marketing whether it's going to get people to come back or not, that I'm not too sure. The thing is, it's going to get people to come back, but whether they're going to stay, I don't know. Like, there's also with these things is they they say they're event. Like, well, okay, the Tachyon Anomaly, that's an event. So that's, I'm assuming, only going to, that's going to be limited. Red Room Takeover. Well, everything else is just, has a name. It doesn't say event by it. So I'm assuming everything besides the Tachyon Anomaly is going to stay. Or I don't know. Like, are all of these events going to stay? Or are they Are they limited time events? um we that's that's like i've got other questions with regards to that i like the fact that they're going to be tying in obviously the wakanda expansion with um with the black panther joining mm -hmm. in so it's a smart way that they have done it i will say that um so only time is going to tell what's one of those things where i still want to play the game just for the story you know what i mean because even if the, i know the story the campaign is the worth middle. playing i mean i don't know yeah. if it's worth like the 60 dollars that it was initially exactly yeah that's the issue i don't know the story like, looks it, good like the actual story looks good i could 30, just watch 40, it on youtube if i wanted yeah. to but i want to play it yeah no it's a it's a fun play like i said it's repetitive in the middle but the the ending makes up yeah. for it um it's you know i, I mean I if you've ever played an mmo you can if i if you've ever played an mmo you can deal with the repetitive parts of avengers <laughs> i think you know um i think it's good uh, speaking about avengers i've got some other side news about it uh, and uh -huh. i know we've got some other things to talk about too with regards to it we've got the other oh, black panther reveal trailer yeah um but uh with regards to the ps5 version of the game um fans are already saying it's so worth it for the load times like the load mm -hmm. times uh not just the ps5 but the series x as well fans are saying that it is so worth upgrading just for the load times um it's a free it's like, upgrade it's a too it's yeah and it's a drastic improvement i mean the ps4 pro version of the game takes about 62 seconds to load but the ps5 takes it and does four seconds you know what i mean it's like that's a huge difference like rather than yeah. waiting a minute you're just gonna wait like four seconds so the game well, like uh the the games community is happy about that. However, there are some issues that people are going to be experiencing with regards to moving your PS4 save over to your PS5. You uh, do both games do have to be installed. Both games do have to be updated before you can mm -hmm. actually convert the save over. So it's not like so you ha do have to have, still have both games installed on each respective console, fully updated mm -hmm. and everything. And this is not a developer problem. Apparently, this is a Sony problem. Mm -hmm. But Sony is implementing tools to allow it to be a lot easier because obviously a lot of games are going to get a next gen upgrade you know yeah, so they're, yeah. and they're going to want to do cross save and being able to bring your save over so hopefully sony works on that but it's a um, huge improvement with load times drastically it's going to make people play the game way more um i think with the next gen version that's going to bring in more players as well obviously not a lot because not everyone has a ps5 it's sold out globally almost you know what i mean yeah. um out of all of these events though i will say that i think the cosmic cosmic cube tachyon anomaly 
those two look like the most fun or like the, the, those two look like they're going to be the most exciting to play you know mm -hmm. i'm also excited for the war for wakanda expansion but i feel like i would be more excited for that had i played the whole game you know yeah. you know and they're just doing some tweaks and adding some more stuff like uh mm. you know post level black, 50 black panther does look sick though yeah the outfit like, they're, they're they're gonna do more outfits outfit that are inspired sick, yeah. by the mcu they're just doing a lot of stuff yeah, I think, I, funny I, enough, even with all these DLCs and all these plans, I think more outfits would do a better job to keep... Look, these I, these events are going to get people to come back 100%. Mm -hmm. But whether they stay or not, that's 100% up to their loot boxes. Like, whether you support them or not, like, the reason I'll... Like, I don't play Fortnite anymore, but the reason I played Fortnite for, like, eight seasons is because I just wanted cool shit, you know? Like, the game didn't change that much drastically, like, each season. It was just I wanted the new weapon skin or I wanted the new character skin. So if I was playing this game theoretically, if they had to just continuously like not just once and once every now and then, but if they were continuously bringing out new skins, I would continuously be spending money on it and I would continuously be playing it. You know, um, I so honestly, I, like if, I, I hope they put a bigger emphasis on that on skins. I think that they would do better if they do. Honestly, if I, I believe that if this game wasn't a Marvel Avengers branded game and it was just like a new ip yeah. like we said with anthem i think they would have probably given up on it a while ago oh a hundred percent a hundred percent but because it's but the such thing is like known property i think that mcu itself is ex expecting to i think before the game kind of flopped i think they were expecting to use this game as a source of advertisement as well for the mcu mm -hmm. in general like with new with new movies coming out i think that that was their game plan initially was to like if this game blew up as games as a service the way they intended it to, you know, I think they were expecting it to be big, not Fortnite big, but like big, big, you know, mm -hmm. and then it would have been free advertisement for Disney plus for like any, for any kind of uh, Marvel TV show or movie, it would have been free advertising, you know? So I think that was their like end goal there in terms of saving money. Cause I can only imagine how much money Disney, um, I can only imagine how much money Disney has to like pay Fortnite nowadays just to have like the Avengers in there, you know, mm -hmm. or who, I don't know who's paying who I, I just know like it's, it's, it's got to be a pain in the ass. So it's got to be yeah. easier to just have your own video game that's huge, you know what I mean, to advertise through. Um, yeah. But even, like, with, like, I guess, like, I, I kind of wish that they took liberties. Like, look, it's cool to have skins, but it's, like, imagine if, um, if like, for instance, Tony Stark, like, the, the, the things he shoots out of his hands, imagine if that was a different color, if it looked a bit different, you know what I mean? Like, those are things that I think people would enjoy, you know? Not just, like, skins, but, like, if the powers where different colors or look different like they can take some liberties there that would definitely make some people more interested yeah. in spending money that is <laughs> well we'll see we'll see what happens uh, over the summer I, i'll keep keep my eye on it and and play you know uh i mean it says march when is the future imperfect update coming uh why is it not have uh oh i guess the it, it's already released uh the Hawkeye one. I should go download it and play it and see how it is. Yeah, Operation Hawkeye. Yeah, so yeah that one is uh, out already. So I will play that, and next time we do the podcast, I'll report back and see, see how it is. Um, all right, let's move on to I the mean, next one. Oh, la last thing to say real quick is because uh, I know eventually the goal for them was to go free to play. It does not look like that's going to happen no. anytime soon. They're if not you're not making it enough money, time. you're not gonna go free to play. Yeah, you know, because that was yeah, that was we, the goal, but doesn't look like it. <laughs> if you're, you know, if you're Fortnite or Apex Legend, you have that amount of players and that many people paying for season passes and paying for cosmetics and all that stuff. Yeah, but when your your user base isn't that big and you're not making that much money, you're not, you know. Unless they oh, think they oh, wow. can, unless they think they can go free to play to get more users in, but I think yeah, maybe no. that time has I mean, passed. The thing is, it would it they could get new players in if they went free to play, but I don't know if they're going to be paying free players. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't know yeah. if they're going to be the type of people that'll spend money because also the they don't as far as they don't have a battle pass, do they, or anything like that involved? No, not as far as I know. know. Like a battle pass really is the best way. For games as a service to go because it's like it's like having a monthly subscription fee to your game you know what i mean yeah. or not monthly but like you know a seasonal subscription fee it's smart um but yeah, yeah well, you, gotta of, get your, you gotta DLC get people hooked out. on the game first 
Exactly. Yeah. Hulk ID DLC came out three uh, three days ago. So if yeah. uh, anybody still plays Avengers, if you guys are listening or watching, try it out. Came out three yeah, days ago. Gonna... Let us know what you think. Yeah, I'm gonna download it. All right. Uh, next up, Outriders. This is a game. Yeah. That, that something uh, I think you and Dorian got to play. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm so stoked for it, man. And the developers are super nice as well. Um, so the big news is that it's going to be a day one Xbox Game Pass release, which is interesting, which is on April 1st, which is great news for me because it's like I was interested in this game, but I wasn't sure because, you know, there's so much content. Like I, I mentioned this on not just this podcast, but almost any video that I do. We, we just have content overload now. So it's like e- – Mm-hmm. nowadays it's like only the things that you really really either have to play or watch or whatever gets taken care of first and this was one of those hmm maybe let me see what people say about it uh, you know is it really good reviews are people you know then i'll plop down my money and, and and get it well i already have xbox game pass it's gonna be on there day one guess what i'll be playing it i don't have to it's, it's like medium right Medium yeah. was one of those games where, okay, it looked kind of cool, but I wasn't sure about it. But because it was on Game Pass, I got it. I played it, and I really enjoyed it. So it was like one of those things that was yeah. a, a win for me. And I think this may be another one. Um, how excited are you for this uh, now that, uh, you know, you're seeing that? Dennis, I, I tell you what, man. I was I was through the moon when I read this. I was so happy. And then I immediately jumped off the moon and I landed on my face back on Earth because I just when it's, cause it's, when for, it, it's console only. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. It's not Game Pass no. on PC. I was I was heartbroken. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I'm still kind of happy because it, I know for a fact that that means that there's going to be look the the game's cross uh, cross platform. I'm going to mm-hmm. get the game regardless. So mm-hmm. now I know that there's going to the servers are going to be full. You know, like I don't have to. Not that I was worried before the time, but now I know I don't have to worry about the servers, like being empty. You know, and mm-hmm. like struggling to find people to play with. Even though the game is only like a three three person party game, so you're not in like large parties. But it's still nice to like jump in and out with random people, join their mission, yeah. come in and out. The game's loot like look. It's it's a looter shooter. Uh, for those of you who don't know about the game, the the gameplay itself, the gameplay mechanics are great. Uh, it's like this fir- uh, fir- uh, first person looter shooter type game. Uh, big emphasis on guns has great guns also abilities because you get some cool abilities in the game the the combat will most likely remind some of you guys of destiny destiny 2 where it's like you have your weapons and then you still have your melee attacks and stuff Uh, but the loot man oh i'm i'm that's the thing i'm most excited for about this game is like i love any good looter shooter or just looter game like whether it's diablo borderlands this any game where you're just grinding for like epic loot i i'm there for especially if it looks cool and the loot in this game looks sick dennis like like the end like even like the mid game loot looks amazing the story story is pretty good from like me me and dorian got to experience the uh the opening and it sets up a pretty interesting story uh, without giving away too much we kind of like come to this planet as colonizers to come and colonize the planet something goes wrong and then all the the colonies end up in different factions one thing happens to like a few things happen that i can't talk about for uh, spoiler reasons next thing you know you wake up in like a capsule and it's been like a hundred years or something <laughs> and um and now you're like in this and the, basically that planet has already been colonized by people but really badly and like there's war and all these things it's just a, it's an interesting setting for a game as well as well as dealing with the actual new world itself and like there's like a thunderstorm that happens where people get like abilities or and that's yeah, how yeah. everyone ends up getting their different classes and yeah there's it's, like it's a really six, cool. I'm, I'm six looking, yeah. minute uh video uh walkthrough trailer that kind of shows kind of the the different factions mm. and the different powers and kind of a bit of the story as well. It's like, I'm, I will say this. It's, this is one of the games that I've been looking forward to for a while for multiplayer purposes. Like the story, I'm like, look, like I said, the story is good. I'm not playing this for the story. I'm playing this because I just want to play with my, like, I just want to shoot things with my friends and I want us to argue about who's got the better loot. And, you know, like I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it was originally supposed to come out end of last year. And then it was original. And then after that, it got, was supposed to come out in february and now we're getting it april 1st which is we're getting it you know it's um the delays weren't that long if you consider it from december to now it's not that big of a delay i mean yes there were two of them but like look times are crazy you know if you delay a video if you had to delay a video game in december of last year i don't think anybody would have cared everyone's like i got my life to worry about you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) um 
but it's a great game. Like if if you have Xbox Game Pass um, Ultimate or if you have Xbox Game Game Pass for the console, um, definitely try it out on April first. Uh, let me know. I just hope like well, because I'm I've always been interested when a company makes a deal like this, right? Because this is Square Enix. This yeah. is as far as I know. This this is not a company that Xbox owns. So mm-hmm. I'm wonder I'm wondering how why they would make this do you think do you think they made this deal because they were worried about their 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 income i don't know like i just they're worried about the, the their sales I'm, that's what's my guess yeah, is because I want, it's I'm, not I want a, the developers to make money uh like, i think because nice they didn't want to spend a huge amount on marketing this game i mean look you play the game obviously True. you're hyped about it it's fun speaking objectively as someone who hasn't played the game the game looks a little believe, hard to mark. It looks very hard to market um, it, because it, yeah, it, it's because it, it's like it's it's a bunch of different things blended in together. It doesn't. Some people would argue that the game doesn't know what it wants to be. I wouldn't. The game knows exactly what it wants to be. It's just it's one of those games where it's taking so many ele- like so many elements and put it together that it's like the, the like it's the only way you could market this is if as it's like a. A Destiny Two clone, but then it's not like at all. You know what I mean? It's so different. From well, Destiny I mean, 2. I heard the Combat some of the similar, uh, but... former developers of like uh, Gears of War are working. We're working on it as well. So mm. it's just yeah, it's it's good. So I I hope it doesn't impact their. The thing is like clearly they made this decision like you said for a reason because marketing word of mouth does a lot. If you've got if you if your friend is playing this on the Xbox console for free and he's like it's amazing and it's cross platform, then you're gonna get it if you're on PlayStation or if you're on PC. You know what yeah. I mean? Especially if it's cross-platform, then you can play with your buddy on Xbox. It works. So hopefully, it brings in more players. That's what I'm hoping for, because uh, I do. From when I originally, when I spoke to the developers, I believe they said that they don't plan on doing any, any loot boxes, any games mm-hmm. as a service thing. It's like once this game is released, it's that that's it. You know, they'll do DLCs probably, but there's not gonna there's no microtransactions in this game. Like they, that they they really want to, they they were putting a big emphasis on that originally when I first spoke to them. They were like, we really don't. Like, because we want people, they were like, we want people to play the game. You know, we we don't want people to focus too much on the loot, which yeah. was bad that I was interviewing them because I was like, look, I just want to focus on the loot. <laughs> that's all yeah. I want to do. Um, but yeah, that's great. That's great news. Hopefully, it doesn't impact their. Hopefully, it doesn't impact their sales, or hopefully, it boosts their sales. I don't know what the game plan is here with it because, like I said, it's not like yeah. I don't know what the Microsoft cut is so or like what they win. pay. Do they pay yeah. per download? Or I don't know exactly how that. But then again, I don't know exactly how Xbox Gold works as well. The free. Games, it's probably you know? limited now that I think about it because the Xbox Game Pass uh, in general games come and go on Game Pass all the time. They're always adding games and removing games. Yeah. The games that stay are the ones that Microsoft has a stake in or Microsoft has a share in. Yeah. So because they don't have a, a stake or a share in this, I have a feeling that it's going to be a thing where it's like. It's on Game Pass for like maybe six months or something, you know. Yeah, it's cool. Like maybe it's one of those helps. Deals. It maybe help jumpstart. It jumpstarts the the fan base the or the sale, player yeah. base, you know. So because there wasn't uh, much, like you said, there, there wasn't much marketing for this. Like even back when it like no, first I out. I only heard about it because of you guys and you guys played it and hi- mm. and you guys hyped it up or whatever. So it just looks like a game that's very hard to market. Yeah. Um, it's definitely. A By the way, for anybody anybody game. listening who is curious, if you don't want to wait till April first, uh, there is a demo out currently right now. I believe, mm-hmm. I believe there is a cool. demo out. Cool. Yeah. So um, everyone's been hyping up the demo. They love the demo. So yeah. Um, EA Play uh, finally came to Game Pass for mm-hmm. PC. Uh, it already existed on the console side, but now it's integrated into the PC side. Of Game Pass, which Correct. is cool, because which is cool, because uh, I I hadn't had a chance to play Squadrons yet, uh, the Star Wars, uh, you know, uh, flight game, and yeah. uh, I really wanted to try it out in peace uh, with with VR and whatnot. Um, so I'm gonna take a look at that, and there's a whole bunch of other games. Anthem's on there. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty much all the sport games ever, yeah. Madden, FIFA. Which NFL. is weird. They never made a UFC for PC, which kind of mm. sucks because then you and does, me yeah. play. I would love to play. I'd love to get back into it, man, just in general. Yeah. Well, but then they again, never, like, I've been, I've been thinking, you, what I guess you you? UFC fans are not uh, PC owners. Oh, they, they're not. They're they are just not. It's like, it's, it's also because it's, it's still quite like a masculine kind of thing, you know? And like PC gaming isn't considered masculine, even though Henry Cavill does it, which is yeah. stupid. <laughs> it's the most masculine thing there is building your PC. Um, I, I I digress. Um, 
yes, my experience. Let me talk about because I've actually been using it the past. Oh, few okay. Days. Cool. Um, so when you go into the Xbox Game Pass, because look, okay, for anybody who has Game Pass, it's relatively straightforward on console. EA Play was just kind of added there. It's all there. With on Game Pass for PC, um, the EA Play games that show up on your Game Pass for PC is very limited. So it took me a, like not very long to figure this out. But if you're looking through the list on your Game Pass and you scroll all the way down, in tiny letters it says, download the EA Play app to access all the games. So you do have to have another launcher, which I'm okay with because it's like, it's look, you basically all it did was it, it tied your EA account to your uh, Xbox account. It just tied the two accounts together. So now it's like, I I use the EA, I'm, I'm literally click, clicking on it right now. I open up the EA Play app and I have access to like hundreds of games. Whereas if I'm looking at the Xbox app, it's only showing like maybe like 50 or 60, you know? Mm -hmm. But there's way more. There is way more available. You just have to look at it through the EA Play app. Um, How do you tie it together? Because I, I, I downloaded the app, the, the EA Play app, and I just logged in with like, I guess, a previous account I maybe had made that had nothing to do with the uh, Xbox Game Pass. So how, how do you yeah. tie it together? So you go, so you, oh, just open up your, uh, you start with Xbox Game Pass because that's where your membership starts. And then if, you, on, if you're on Game Pass for PC, I don't know how you do it on console, but on PC, if you're on Game Pass for PC, you literally just click on any game you want to download from EA Play, doesn't matter what game. And then it's going to, when you click install, it's going to tell you that the other thing, the EA Play beta needs to be installed. Um, and then if you follow that link, like if you if you install it through the Xbox app, it, it'll like automatically link your accounts together. Hmm. And then um, and then once it's linked together, like for instance, now I exclusively, like if I want to, like I don't open up the Xbox app if I want to play EA Play games, I just go straight to the EA Play app. Also some people, if you, if you guys are experiencing bugs, uh, just restart your PC. I had to... Because once I download, once I, once I downloaded EA Play and then I downloaded a game for EA Play, it was there was like an issue with my account where it was like I have the game downloaded and installed, but my account was like you don't actually own this game because EA Play hadn't like registered that the account was linked yet. So I had to like restart my PC, I guess, to restart the apps or the pro programs, and then it, now it's all working. My EA Play account is linked to my Xbox account. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna quickly, real quick, I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Um, if the other way around too, because you can do it the other way around. I'm just going to open up the EA Play app to make sure I do it right. So you got the EA Play app open, and then you literally just click on your, you hover over your name where your 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 account is at the top right. Uh, you go to settings, and then you go to um, my membership, and you should be able to click on manage my membership, and then it'll take you to the website, and you should be able to link your Xbox Game Pass there. So that's like another way of doing it there. But yeah, uh, huge, huge, cat, huge catalog just got added. Uh, it's been there for a while for console players. But if you are on Game Pass or PC, check it out. Download the EA Play app, link your accounts. You've got access to so many more games. Possibly, I would say, I think more than you would have on console because you have like the whole Command and Conquer series and a lot of RTS games and a lot of PC games that just aren't on console that are on the EA Play, on the, uh, on the app, on the program. Let's see here. <laughs> I'm trying to. You're trying to do it real quick. <laughs> well, yeah, cause like I have my own. Yeah, see. When I open up the EA desktop or whatever, it just. It has. And you're making sure that you're using the EA Play app, not the Origin app, because it used to. Yeah, like, this is the it's, one it's, that, it's I, like, that I clicked from the link. Yeah. Yeah, it's called EA Desktop, right? That's yeah, what yeah. it's supposed to be called. Yeah. It's like a little red icon. Yeah, you should be able to if you click on your name like Dennis at the top right and then settings and then account management and it'll take you to a web page if you haven't linked your account yet and then it should be able you should be able to link your accounts there. But uh, if not, like I said, the easiest way to do it is through through Xbox, just like uninstall the program and then reinstall it through Xbox and it should automatically link. Um. But yeah, well, we're um, moving moving on. Uh, yeah. lo lo loads of, loads of stuff. So check it out. Check out the check out the uh, check out Game Pass if you haven't yet. It's so cheap. If you still haven't checked out Game Pass, um, reminder that you get your first month for a dollar. You know, your first month only costs a dollar. So try it out. See if you like it. If you don't like it, cancel your subscription. All you lose is a dollar. You might you might end up finding out that you love it. So yeah. Um, what should we hop into next year? You want to do? 
Yeah. Xbox showcase. Um, yeah, there's going to be a Xbox showcase in March, but they've announced, or maybe not so much announced. March but 26th said that on it's Friday. It's going to be focused on indie stuff. So this is not yeah. like the big Bethesda one because everyone's like, okay, when's the one where they're going to announce which Bethesda titles are going to be exclusive to Xbox and which are going to be, cro- you know, cross-platform. Yeah. That's the one that everyone's kind that, of waiting yeah. for, but that's going to be in the summer. Yeah, they say, well, this one, they, like you said, they're going to be focusing on indie games, but I would, I mean, these are like, yeah, they're indie games, but there's these are like indie games with a budget, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This, this is, is not, not like, like these are two people in a, in a garage. No. Yeah, like Stalker 2 and Second Extinction, I barely consider indie games, but yeah. Um, the rest of them, I've never liked. Like The Ascent, yeah, that, I, that's an indie game. Wild at Heart, Void Train, the XO one, but yeah, Stalker two and Second. Ex- then again, I guess in for me, indie has always been like they use indie in the in the sense here that they mean independent. You know what I mean? Like they're not yeah. an own studio. Like whether it's like it can it can be twenty people, it can be four people. If you're a privately owned studio, if you're an independently owned studio, then you're an indie. You're an indie studio, and you do indie games. Doesn't matter how good the quality. Technically, that Wukong, the Wukong game we saw, would technically be an indie game. You know, and look at that. <laughs> yeah, um, a Valheim's an indie game, and that's that's huge as well. Um, so that's cool. Like, look, uh, X going even going back to like the two thousands. Xbox is always, even though I've been, even though I grew up a Sony fanboy, I always had more respect for Xbox than Sony in the way that Xbox treated smaller developers. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, even like like back on the Xbox three hundred and sixty, they had so many indie games, and like it was the only place you could you couldn't get indie games on your PS three. You know what I mean? Like, unless they, like, it sold really well or, like, it, you know, they got a, a distribution deal or something. It was impossible. So, like, Xbox 360, they really emphasized the whole indie game market, I think. Like, it's... Or, like, they helped push it along. So, I'm glad to see that here we are, 2021, and they're still pushing the, the indie market along because they know that, like, it's it's good growth for the uh, for the industry. Um, but, yeah, Xbox is promising over 100 games in total from indie developers worldwide. Um like Devolver. Devol- I keep forgetting Devolver's an indie studio because they make such amazing games. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like Devol- Devolver, I feel like Devolver, in my mind, Devolver's like not a big studio, but they like they just, I don't know, man. They Their games clap, dude. Their games are so good. Devolver makes like really good, fun games to play. Um, but yeah, so I suppose we'll probably talk about that next week because um, the event is on Friday. Um, by the sounds of things, we'll be able to watch it before the podcast. Yeah. Um, time wise, at least. So we can talk about that next week. It'll be good for sure. Cool. Um, all right. Next up, we've got. Uh, here we go. Ah, Life Gotham Knights. Strange. Oh, God. No, Gotham oh, Knights. don't remind me. Don't remind Who's me, up? Dennis. <laughs> got delayed to 2022. I mean, remember when we saw that last year? I was like, are you sure you're going to be able to get it out? And t- like. I do remember you being skeptical, yes. Yeah, people are very ambitious with their... I was like, you just announced it, and you're going to say that it's going to be out that soon? It's like, I don't think so. So it's been delayed to 2022. Um, You know, uh, look, for me, when when games get delayed, it's, it's not as bad as, like, when movies get delayed because usually when movies get delayed that's kind of a bigger issue because yeah and with movies, well there's with, more risk involved because it's like reshoots you have a lot more risks yeah involved, like things, it, you can only fix issues you only you know? can fix so much in reshoots mm. um exactly in movies, right where where in not to say you can totally fix a game that totally sucks um just by delaying it but if you have foundation there you can kind of there's more leeway to to... well i mean it's the main difference between like a movie getting delayed and a game getting delayed is that when a movie gets delayed like actually here's the thing with reshoots you could actually fix everything you could reshoot the whole movie but the the issue is who's who's available who has the budget who has the time who has the money you know do we still have the same costumes do we still have the same venues like it's a lot more complicated. Whereas with video games, when a video game gets delayed, it's not like they loot, they've they lost out on resources. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? 
So that's why it's not as bad. That's why when nowadays when video games get delayed, also we're so desensitized to it. It's like, okay, <laughs> you know, ever since Cyberpunk, we're all just like, yeah, delays, whatever. They are, <laughs> that, that's just the world we live in now, you know? Yeah. Like, I, don't, I feel like people aren't even angry. They're just like, yeah, cool. <laughs> Another delay makes sense, you know? <laughs> oh, and I am, it does suck though, because I'm so excited for this, like really excited for this. I, I love co-op games. The game looked great, so I'm yeah. I yeah, uh, it's I'm a bit bummed. Yeah, I think for me, I oh, I, I, I keep I forgot Hog, Hog, Hogwarts got delayed as well. Yeah, Vampire: yeah. The Masquerade Bloodlines Two got delayed as well. Lord of the Rings: Gollum got delayed. I forgot I forgot about all these other games that got delayed, man. See what I mean? How desensitized we are. Like I already, you can, you, we're gonna talk about this in a week or two from now, and I'm gonna forget that it got delayed. You know? <laughs> yeah, but there's so many games that come out that it's like sometimes i forget when game like even a game that i want to play like mm. gotham knights is even coming because it's just like all i'm thinking about is what's kind of in the immediate future right true yeah and, and then i kind of try and tackle the games a few months at a time i guess if if, if mm. that's that makes any sense instead of like okay what's coming out a year from now or two years i'm like oh no no, no. what's yeah. coming out this I mean, month next month maybe like two three is- month window me and you are more you and i are the type of people that are usually more focused about the games that have that came out like six months ago usually because yeah. we're, we're always playing catch up <laughs> you were always just playing catch up i'm you know? still playing cyberpunk like, i'm i'm at the very end of cyberpunk 2077 oh man yeah. like i i've i'm i'm done with cyberpunk but i mean yeah. done as in like i done i did i did three playthroughs I've, I've i've milked that thing dry for all it's worth which i, I loved every minute of it okay i played all three three like starting campaigns well once but, uh, i finish like, it Let's do a spoilers review, even if it's super late. Spoilers review, yeah. Let's do a spoiler well, ter- review. Like, there are, even though I haven't, even though I finished it a long time ago, I remember every single thing vividly. Like there are certain, like I know we can talk, about, like I know that you've already experienced what happened to Jackie, but like there are so many moments in that game where it's like, holy shit, you know, like, mm-hmm. like if you like, um, if you're experiencing the game without bugs, they actually really are like dramatic and emotional like moments in the game. Yeah. Um, but then like, like even. Uh, even now, I'm I'm only now finishing Ghost of Tsushima. I've only now I've only recently had the time. I I, I did beat that one before you did. So yeah, yeah. Like I'm only like I'm only halfway through the game now. But to be fair, I gave my console to my nephew to play uh, Fortnite uh, during the pandemic. But now school's back, so uh, he doesn't have time for Fortnite. So I took my PlayStation back. Oh, cool. But yeah, so Gotham Gotham Knights got delayed. That sucks, but it's it is what it is like you said you were skeptical in the beginning it, it kind of makes sense to be honest you know like it, it seems like it would have been a bit of a rush job if it did come out yeah i mean they did that whole oh okay uh, gotham knights and then the next arkham game and suicide squad all in the same oh yeah with the suicide at least the suicide i guess the suicide squad is not getting delayed because it seems like they might be able to put some uh microtransactions in there hmm. Because isn't isn't that going to be more of a multiplayer game, the Suicide Squad? Yeah, I'm not too too sure. Not too but, sure. But they didn't show any I'm gameplay sorry, I, from that. Way, At least Gotham yeah. Knights had gameplay for it. We just, it. We just saw a trailer. Yeah, I was gonna say with with the Suicide Squad, all we had was a cinematic. I think. Same yeah. same with the Arkham game. Yeah. Well, I'm still excited for Gotham Knights the most, just because I like co-op games. You don't. There's not enough co-op games. You know, there's not a lot, especially couch co-op. There's not enough couch mm-hmm. co-op games for you and your buddies. You know. Uh, All right, the um, uh, we can talk about this life is strange thing as well, real quick. Um, yeah, changing the topic. I don't know how I, I mean, it seems uh, actually, what's well, to, to be honest, it's like something that doesn't really phase me too much. I enjoyed Life is Strange, the first, I never played the second one, the first one, I loved the first one. It was like an indie movie, but as a game, you know, literally the entire time, it just felt like I was living in an indie movie, it was amazing, you know, but um. Mind you, that was because it was also like so unique at the time. Now there are so many games that are similar, that are like very similar to that whole indie movie as a video game kind of thing. You know, there's a lot of Life is Strange knockoffs, not just in terms of, um, and I don't mean in terms of uh, gameplay or in terms of mechanics. I mean in terms of like genre or setting. Like I think of like Life is Strange going forward, the genre that Life is Strange has created moving forward kind of reminds me of the genre that I think it finally died out in Hollywood, thank God which is that it was this new emerging genre in Hollywood in the early 2010s up until now, where it was sick dying girl falls in love with boy, but dies anyways. <laughs> you know what I'm talking young, about? There's young, so many... young adults, uh, what's it called? 
yeah like everything everything and like there's there's so many like there's there's so many movies where it's like like sad dying girl falls in love with boy thinks she's gonna live but dies anyways it's anyways it was like it it works but it's like once everyone starts milking the same horse you know <laughs> milking horse. oh yeah yeah I'm, or it's a dying boy blah 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 and, and i think there was like that one movie that was like both of them were dying like exactly right. yeah it was just like yeah so for me this is what like life is strange started that trend in video games not the exact same trend but like a similar kind of setting where i feel like it's been milked pretty damn dry not the choose your own adventure thing like like telltale game type of stuff that's always going to be around the genre the, like i said mechanics are fine but yeah i don't know it feels like it's getting milked dry this new one seems interesting because they're first of all they're bringing a new character with new abilities new powers her name's alex and she's got a new ability the previous uh, character max she could turn back time which was uh which played in well for choose your own adventure because it's like imagine playing the tell any telltale game but you're able to rewind time and make your decision again you know so it was a good mechanic to have mm -hmm. uh the main difference between this game and the previous games and this is the thing that caught my eye is that they're not doing an episodic release life is strange one yeah. and life is strange two had an episodic release episode one episode two yeah. Each had it four episodes. So with this one, it seems like they're releasing a fully. They're still having game. these like episodes, but they're just releasing them mm. all together, like as a yeah. Like, like I think you can like still a, play like it show. broken down, yeah. But yeah, they're not so releasing like it once a month or whatever. Do you think this is because they saw with Life is Strange two that they didn't sell as well with the the separate episodic releases? Probably, it's, probably, it's like, and also Life, like... Life is Strange two sold well, but then episode like two three and four didn't you know like mm -hmm. the first life is strange 2 sold well but as they went on in the series of life is strange 2 it wasn't selling as well so i think it's i think they know that the biggest hype is on launch of your yeah. game you know what i mean yeah like oh, you're, uh, you're never gonna have you're never gonna have a game where that sells more dlcs than the base game you know what no I mean? no uh oh sorry like to backtrack on the thing i, I don't know i it, it's late for me I'm, I'm getting tired so i was saying like there was another arkham game but there's not i i was confusing the court of owls stuff that that that's in oh, Go yeah, the court gotham knights yeah. knights trailer for a new so this is not an arkham game there is not announced arkham game it's just gotham knights yeah, or whatever it's gonna be Gotham uh, Knights and, yeah. and suicide squad so there's only two games not three uh anyways life is strange to be honest like i do look kind of like this new approach because as someone who hasn't played one uh the first game or the second game, even though it is available uh, for me to play on game pass. I feel like with this episode three, one or not episode three, number three, that this approach, I could be like, okay, this story is not connected to the other two. And then it's all being released at the same time. I'm just going to play it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like they've yeah, already it, built it's, up the it's, it's a standalone. Yeah. It's set yeah. in the same universe, but it's a standalone. Yeah. But it, it, it's one of those things where, okay, I, I feel like because of that reason, I'll be much more inclined to play it, um, especially because I believe it will be coming on Game Pass, right? On day one, if I'm not mistaken. Most, li most likely, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like... Mm. Um, I mean, look, the stories are usually good. I, I do feel like it's worth mm -hmm. mentioning that, like... Whether the genre has been beaten to death or not, their stories are good and they are interesting, and their characters are like well thought out. They're in depth. Most most of what their what do you think of the trailer? Are, um, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Most okay. of their characters are well thought up and in depth. Talking about the trailer, I am worried about how clean it looks compared to the previous games. Like the gra you can obviously tell graphics much better, but it's like. I kind of liked even like the old graphics. <laughs> you you want crappier amazing. graphics? Is that what you're saying? It just it gave it like I I kind of do. Well, not crappier, yeah. but like less polished because it gave it an art style. It gave it like a film grain. You know what I mean? Yeah. It gave it like it it made it feel more like an indie movie. Like it, I I don't know how to explain it. Like it just it gave it more of an aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so going forward, it looks like look the graphics do look good, but it almost feels like it starts it started to feel more like a video game than in like an experience. You know like. It, it almost looks like I should be in a battle royale, you know, <laughs> like in terms of like how like cartoony some of it looks. And I don't know. It's a it does look good. I'm still going to try it out because their stories are always good. I like this new character as well because she seems like I, I like the old character Max as well. But she um, she really was like, you know, a, a bit of like a fragile girl, like a wallflower, which is there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But it's going to be nice to play someone who's a bit more like edgier, harder, you know, don't know what their power is going to be. Um, 
But yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not a fan of the art style. I will say. I have a feeling that they could have gone with just the graphics that are just as good, but maybe went with like a different art style. Or I don't know. They could have like. I don't know what they could have done. I just feel like they should have made it a bit more unique. It doesn't look unique to me. The art style looks very generic. It looks sharp. It looks clean, but it doesn't. It looks generic. You know. Maybe they could have gone with different colors, like more like uh, pastel kind of colors or something. I don't know. Like. We'll see. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an art director. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I, I'm interested. I may I may try and check out the the first two <laughs> games before beforehand mm. before this comes out. But yeah, the, fir I, I do... the, fir the, fir the first one's really good. I will say yeah. that the first one is really good. The second one is also good because it's like it's a continuation. But the first one, man, especially if you've never played any of them before, the first one really is good. I highly recommend it. Cool. And it's slow. Pay. Actually, you can you can play with the uh, you can play with the misses. It's uh because it's a slow paced game, you know. Mm -hmm. it's like it's more like a movie you know yeah. so you can you can play it with the misses i think she'd enjoy it cool um all right uh next thing up we've got a playstation vr 2 the controllers have been revealed which is the biggest complaint well maybe not the biggest complaint but one of the biggest complaints about the last one um we already know that the new psvr 2 will not have you won't need a webcam to like do the positioning because the tracking has the new technology that like every uh, Oculus headset has now. Um, but the controllers now, if you look at them, they're like these rounded, they look like Oculus Rift controllers, to be honest with you. They mm -hmm. look very much like Oculus Rift controls, except for it has like an extra uh, kind of like this extra like circle around kind of on the bottom part where the Rift only has one on top, but it has a, a you know, um, a trigger. It has a thumbstick. It has buttons. It just it looks like a, what a VR controller should look like, and it looks kind of cool having the double circles or whatever around your wrist. It just looks and and I'm guessing probably feels much better than the stupid Move controllers they had before. Oh, hundred percent. Which were the, the, the what that came out in 2007. <laughs> Freaking 14 year old hard hardware, man. Yeah, and they just they didn't fit vr i mean it, it does this have finger tracking it looks like it does or like or similar to the index yeah in it has tracking. some sort of uh tracking for your fingers i don't know how the index though yeah there's a strap on there so you can kind of fully like let go and it's your the the control is still on your hand you know what i'm saying where this yeah. one if you fully let go it's gonna you know fall off, fall, yeah. fall off uh, I mean, that's how the Quest that's, controls that's, are as well. Yeah. Only the the index ones, but the index ones are very expensive. Um, well, that's why the knuckle. That's why the knuckles are so good, man. The knuckles yeah. are amazing because they have yeah. they just they're just strapped. They're they're strapped on as if they were like, I don't like I don't know how to explain. It. It's just strapped around your the base of your palm. You yeah. Know? Oh. So, so it's, it's really cool. This was a nice reveal. Uh, um, you know, it's it seems I'm, like I'm, the way I'm happy. This seems like the P PSVR yeah. 2 is going to be much like how the Oculus Link cable works, where it's like instead mm -hmm. of a PC, you're linking one cable to your PS5, and it's doing all the horsepower and just sending. I mean, the one benefit of that versus like a standalone headset like the Quest is that the the headset itself doesn't have to be that heavy because none of the computations have to be taking place. It's purely just a video feed. They're just sending all the processes happening on your PS5, and it's sending it to to your headset. You know, so it does look comfortable as well. Like I'm just looking at the ergonomics of it. It does it does look fairly comfortable. It looks cool. Like the the diff they were put in a difficult position because of how late they are to the game with making their own controllers, where it's like every other possible good design was patented. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In terms of like, or every like comfort design was patented. Like. Looking at their PSVR headset, the way it was designed, I can tell you now that they most likely would have wanted to do something to the the knuckles. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe not in terms of like raw power, but in terms of ergonomics, they most probably wanted to do something similar to that, but they can't because of patent issues. So I think this is like, like I was expecting something that was going to look a lot like an Oculus Quest controller, and this does. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's, it's got minimal buttons on it, which uh, I like. It's gotten enough though. You know what I mean? Like you've got uh. By the looks of things, you've got triangle and square on your left side. You've got circle and X on your right side. Both sides have a joystick. You've got the start, the select and start buttons on both sides. You've got the triggers on both sides, and then yeah, you've got uh, extra, extra thumb triggers. It's it's got every single button that would be on a PS4 controller. The exact same amount of buttons that are on a PS4. Yeah. Well, minus the touch 
the touch and you know it's going to have haptic controller. feedback and an adaptive mm. uh what you call it that'll be sick actually yeah. i think the haptic feedback will be better on this controller than the ps5 controller which keep in mind actually have finally been able to try out the haptic feedback on a ps5 controller mm -hmm. it is awesome but i feel like it would be so much more awesome with it in vr you know mm -hmm. what i mean um, next one is uh, a minor thing is oh wait hold up go and go, go back real quick did you I, I think you said this did you say that you don't need a you don't need cameras for this or you don't need no to you don't motion... you don't need which oh, was yeah. the thing I hated the most about the the yeah, is, is cameras VR well you had to set Same up the, the webcam the and it was it, the tracking yeah. was terrible and it just wasn't a good yeah it was Same really made for a sit down uh, well, experience. Yeah, the the tracking was good with the Vive, but the setup was a bitch as well. Having like your light boxes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the like, index, moving, is, yeah. the index, you still need the the boxes, but it's supposed to be a premium experience for the index, which is like people who yeah. have the money, who have the space to to do it. I mean, I yeah. don't. But so. even even moving forward, people who have the space and who have the premium money, it's like, yeah, I've got the money, yeah, I've got the space, but I'm lazy. I'm just going to do the quest instead. Yeah. You know? Like I guarantee you there are people who have the money and the space to do the to do the to do the uh, to do the vibe or the uh, the H, you know what I mean, the uh, the other anything that involves a light box or like the higher end things they can do that, but they're probably just going to end up taking the, the the Oculus Quest 3 when it comes out, you know, because they're it's like why, with the it's Oculus, the same reason why we rent movies instead of going to the cinema because we're lazy. Yeah. And also the way you know it's funny because the Oculus Link thing has only been around a mm. little over a year, and to me it's like such a thing now where it's like I I own Oculus Quest Two, like I can just play any VR game off of Steam with my Quest Two, even though it's a standalone with the cable it's so i don't need another system you know what i mean it's an all-in-one basically it's a standalone yeah it's a pc vr exactly it does everything it's that i easy, need yeah so you can show it to your friends you can take it wherever you want yeah a uh, real quick going going back to this uh p to the uh, the vr talk before we move on uh just read here so it is confirmed that the uh, it works the same way as the valve knuckle where it's like it does have the the, the the finger sensors mm -hmm. so you it, it gets the finger tracking through the finger sensors but like you said because it doesn't have like well in this picture i can see the person is holding it with um he's got lanyards attached so if you let go the controller doesn't fall well yeah but i mean the the, the regular quest it's still gonna be annoying because it's like like it's like having like this finger tracking i think is cool but having full finger tracking with the sensors is stupid because it's like well if i want to use all of my fingers i have to drop the controller <laughs> you know what i mean yeah that's the, like why if, the what you call it the index that's why the, the knuckle the knuckles better, yeah. for the index work uh, you can let go of the controller yeah. and they'll still like hover right where your yeah. hand is it's so smart yeah. the way they did yeah. that yeah but yeah, uh, hey, look, any any look, it's better than the move controllers. That's all I can yeah, say moving forward. It's, it's a hundred percent better than the move controllers. So on the flip side of this, there was kind of a rumor going around that uh, the Xbox Series mm -hmm. X was going to have VR, um, because in a, I forgot which country it was. Uh, I think is this which country was this? But anyways, like this error message popped up that basically said uh oh this this vr headset is not compatible with you know the xbox which is basically oh italy almost, italy yeah like so people are like oh really that's that's uh there's a actual vr headset that's coming to the xbox you know versus because you know if 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 you don't have any plans for vr headset you wouldn't have some sort of this vr headset's not compatible it just would True. not work you it know? just it just wouldn't work, yeah. So, but apparently Microsoft has come out and said, no, that's an that's just a miscommunication, uh, a localization in terms of the language. Like, th I guess apparently VR can also be used as uh, AV, like audio video. Oh, oh, well that makes sense. Yeah, in in, in Italy, so that's kind oh, of as so it could be an input. VR could stand for an in, like an a, yeah, a, either yeah. an audio or a visual input. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and they said they have no plans on working in VR, uh, VR headset. Maybe. VR could be visual, visual rear, who knows? <laughs> yeah. So. Very red. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. No, that makes sense. We've spoken about this before. It's like, look, at the end of the day, because Apple said it as well, the end game, the real end game here, like 50, 60 years from now is AR. You know yeah. what I mean? That's the, that's the end game. So I think like Microsoft, 
not Xbox specifically, but Microsoft is just like, well, we're just going to focus on the HoloLens. You know, we're going to spend the next like 30 to 40 years focusing on the, the HoloLens so that when AR does come out, we can compete. Because that's what, that's, I can tell you right now, Microsoft is thinking like we're going to, Microsoft and Apple, they're going to be the main competitors for AR in the future because they're the only people right now pursuing it as hard. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it makes sense as well. Like, like, like they said, their number one takeaway. From, well, Phil Spencer said, nobody's asking for it, which is true. I don't know anybody who's like, yeah, give me. Especially like, look, everyone who had the PSVR realized that VR on a console. Okay, going maybe going forward, this is different. But going back, like looking into the past, VR on a console. After looking at the PSVR, we realized is very gimmicky and very like novelty. Mm-hmm. You know, it works, but not nearly as well as what it, what it would work on PC or the way we have it today like dude psvr was fun but if i had to if i had to show someone psvr on launch compared to the oculus quest 2 or like anything mm-hmm. else today they would be like why why would you spend money on this you know what yeah. i mean so i think people saw that and they were like yeah it's not gonna work on xbox also like currently like xbox doesn't have an overwhelmingly large amount of vr titles you know like they would i think like if if xbox was ever working on a vr headset we would probably find out through studios developing games for the headset you know what i mean yeah so, yeah. so that's the first way we would, we would find out so i don't it's just never going to happen which is cool because nobody nobody cares like nobody like they said nobody's asking for it i don't think anybody wants it particularly you know i think like, the next step is for vr and console anyway not because the quest 2 mm-hmm. is already kind of a mainstream thing um yeah or at least the most mainstream VR has been so far. I think the issue with consoles is to get rid of that cord and have it where, okay, you still need your your console. console but you're streaming it. Yeah, yeah. streaming it wirelessly, which you kind of can do on, on PC with virtual desktop, but it's not 100% full, you know? You're not getting... Yeah. At this point, it's still not the best quality that's why, video. That's, that's, that's why I have high hopes latency. for... So. Yeah, that's why I've got high hopes for the PSVR 2, because... That's also another reason why Xbox, technically, if they did do their own VR kit, would have done amazingly if they, like, did VR Xbox Game Pass. They could have killed it, you know what I mean? They really could have, but, um, like, they're not focused on it. But with PlayStation, look, no one really uses PlayStation now, but in terms of streaming, like, they've been in it for way longer than Xbox. Like, I still haven't tried out the xCloud streaming, but if anybody's going to yell at me right now and be like, oh, Xbox does streaming better, I'm like, okay, true, they might do streaming better, but... PlayStation, you've been able to stream video games for like three years now. You know mm-hmm. what I mean, like or more. They were they were in the game in terms of they were in the streaming video games thing before anybody else, as far as I know. So moving forward, I can see how first of all, next gen consoles make sense for VR. Like the PS4, the PS4, the Xbox, uh, Xbox One, those are both beefy consoles when they came out, but they weren't beefy enough for VR. No. The PS5, the uh, uh, the Xbox Series X, they're beefy enough for VR. You know what's going to be even beefier is when they do do the PS5 Pro or the Xbox Series X Pro. You know, and then VR would be really beefy on those consoles. Yeah, and I mean, like I, would, said, I, I, I would say this. The goal is no cable. You know, this PS5 so, Xbox Series X generation is definitely cap- VR capable because I feel like mm. you and me have the same uh, uh, graphics card, PCs which is the 2060, yeah. and I would place that more powerful than what you what you're getting out of the xbox one or the ps4 but it's not oh, for sure but it's not as powerful as a ps5 or yeah. xbox series x so it's, it's kind close of, but not as it's powerful, in that yeah. middle ground there and so if if yeah. our 2060s are good enough for vr which they are then i i you know the those consoles should definitely be you got a good point if you could play half-life alex on your system then the ps5 should be able to handle half-life alex you know what i mean yeah with a cable of course but in future the reason i was saying sony is because of their because there's uh their streaming software um it might not be the best but it's very it's integrated very well into their system like i can play i can play playstation games on my computer using their streaming service even though a lot of playstation games weren't designed for pc I can stream them through the PS Now app on my mm-hmm. PC. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like one of those things where, yeah, like if they make a high-end VR headset, I feel like you should be able to stream the games onto there, you know? Mm. Um, who knows? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. That's for sure. I can't wait to see what the actual headset looks like. I know it'll probably be very similar. Also, now we also know that it it's going to be black because it's got to match the controllers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's got a match. Sure. So we know the VR hits. The next VR headset coming out is black, which is smart because I think they realize that you can't have a VR, a white VR headset, dude. Fingerprints, like it, that thing will get dirty so quick. You're just taking, you're taking it on and off and on and off. Like, I mean, like, I have the quest. I have the quest two, and it's white, and it doesn't have. I don't have a, a big issue how, with that. How 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 much do you how much do you use it a week though? Do you play Beat Saber every day? No, but I have to use it uh, because pick up basketball well, then again, VR. You do VR de- yeah. You- you guys do, do VR development, development so I'm things, using yeah. it every day, like mm. not oh, all true. day, but like, like many hours. A I, day. I just, I just know everybody who had a PSVR headset; those things look dirty as fuck now. Oh. You know what I mean? Like it's been two years; those things look dirty. Like even if you clean it, like it's ah. Uh, then again, because you also got to exp- uh, got to think of a consumer point of view. Most people who play video games are like eating snacks and stuff as well. Like everyone's got greasy controllers; they're gonna have <laughs> greasy headsets as well. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah, but, I try not to uh, yeah, eat when I'm, I'm playing I'm, VR or yeah, playing video games in general. The, oh, for sure. I'm looking yeah. forward to see what this is, the design looks like. It'll definitely be a similar design because they pat, they spend a lot of time patenting their circlet design where it's like it yeah, sits yeah. on your head like a crown instead of being strapped to your face. It's going to yeah. be similar to that, but I think I think they're going to work on peripherals because it had pretty good peripherals at the time, but now every VR headset has good peripherals. So I think they're going to work more on peripherals and... Um, I, I, I think they're going to add cameras to it. I think they're, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to add cameras to the headset so that they don't have to worry about any cameras whatsoever exterior. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, this next one I wanted to talk about is also hardware, which is the Xbox wireless headset, uh, which it came looks out. so good. I'm actually thinking about getting this. I, I watched a lot of reviews um, where they said it's pretty solid. They said it's, it's a pretty good head, a good value. They're saying it's not the best headset, but when it's compared to, you know, but they're talking about in comparison to headsets that are, let's say 150, 160, 170, and this is a hundred dollars. They're saying you're getting pretty good value out of this. It, like I said, it's not the best one, but for what you're paying for is pretty cool. And what, what's interesting is because there's actually Microsoft makes the surface headphones they took some of the technology mm-hmm. and design of the 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 dials on the side for volume. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, so you can control volume with one dial, and then you can control the chat and game volume. So you can you want to lean towards chat, you go one way. You want to lean towards more game volume, you go the other way on the other side. So I'm actually consi- really I'm actually considering getting this. Look, I have these which I love. I use them every day to edit, watch stuff on my uh, PC, um, listen to music, listen to podcasts. I use this for everything. The problem with these are the mics work for my cell phone and for you know PC and all that stuff. For some reason, they don't work with consoles. Like I tried them with uh, my PS4. Well, first of all, I don't even think these co- these connect with with the Xbox One, but they connect with the PS4 and the mic doesn't work. Um, it's just, yeah. so I can hear everything, but I can't use it for, for actually, some, some no, I, I've, I, I've even wired connected into the Xbox controllers and I can hear the game and I can hear voice but the, chat, but, but the mic doesn't work. The right? mic doesn't work. So I'm yeah. thinking about maybe getting these for purely, um, for gaming, you know, 99 bucks, not too, yeah. too expensive. And plus I think you can connect those with your PC as well. So you can play, PC games online and use it for voice chat or music or whatever. Um, it's not going to be my daily driver for other. Th- I'm not going to use them to edit with or anything like that. Um, but for anything gaming related, I think it's uh, pretty cool to be able to use it on the PC and Xbox Series X. Um, I don't know, you know, what else it's compatible with, but. Uh, you know, judging from the reviews, it, it's it seems pretty solid. It'll probably be compatible with everything. Because I, I was gonna say real quick, that's that's one of the harder lessons you learn as a console gamer is um, <clears throat> mo- like when you get a head, you need to get a headset designed for console. Is um, because I found out that that the hard way, like you can't just plug in any. Like I figured, like when the PS4 came out, I could just plug in like, like head, like like the same kind of stuff that you could use on a cell phone, for instance, anything that has a microphone attached. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But no, it's like you have to have a console-built headset in order for the microphone to work, at, as, uh, at least. Because most headsets, if you plug it into a, a console, the microphone won't work because yeah. it's not a gaming headset. Yeah. Uh, it needs to like... And it doesn't matter if you get the adapters 
if you know the cable yeah, yeah. adapters that doesn't matter like it's it's very weird like that but for some reason every single headset that works on a console works universally on everything so yeah. like going forward i've just always bought console gaming headsets because they work on pc and console regardless i don't even have to check you know yeah. or i'll have to buy an adapter for it to get on pc but they're like you know like five bucks or whatever it doesn't doesn't matter um i will say that the uh, the only competition this thing has and the only like and it's not really competition is the uh the headset for the the ps5 mm. it's the same price point um differences are that it doesn't have obviously i would say that the uh they both look very comfortable i like i like the way that the xbox one looks more it looks better i, I like it a lot more in terms of the way it looks and the functionality with the turning with the the things you can turn on the side i mean i i feel like i would feel like i'm some i'm some, i'm in some kind of cyberpunk world you know turn, or like a dj like turning my headset the whole time i like that um but the, the xbox has the i mean sorry the playstation has the 3d hearing so it's more of a focus on 3d hearing from what i can tell both are very good quality headsets both at the same price point the only the only thing that's going to be stopping you from buying one or the other is do you have an xbox or do you have a playstation so it's it's for me it's nice to know that now it's like if anything playstation's always had the better headset but now xbox has also got like a, a headset that's just as good possibly even better you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh for the exact same price point they're both a hundred dollars i believe um so it's just nice like it's 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 about time in my opinion like i don't know if there's been previous i'm sure there were previous uh pro headsets you know what i mean for the xbox but mm -hmm. like they should have announced this or launched this on launch of the series x you know yeah. for, um so they like actually have they actually have the uh, the Bose Quiet Comfort 35s, which is what these are, Series Two. They have a gaming headset mm. version. Oh yeah, but it's you have to you know it's it's three hundred and thirty dollars. Hell no, dude. So so you hell you no. Know, so it's like for three. Dennis is what you do for anybody listening for three hundred and fifty for three hundred and fifty dollars. If you want a gaming headset for three hundred fifty dollars, okay. You buy yourself a pair of really, really good headphones for hundred and fifty dollars that that don't have a that doesn't have a mic attached, and you just spend an extra sixty dollars on a digital mic, <laughs> you know? Well, that's like, what, that's what I think is going on with this thing is that it's actually just this, and they they yeah, just it, added the mic, the mic that actually works for gaming, and plus like a a, a volume control, as well. Exactly. Yeah, it's all in one. Yeah, it's just like. For me, at that like at that three hundred at a three hundred and fifty dollar price point, you can build yourself a freaking streaming setup for your console. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> that's crazy. Like with yeah. good, still having good quality headphones. Like yeah. you can spend a you like truly for gaming, you do not need to spend anything more than one hundred and fifty dollars on like an elite headset. Yeah. And even then, that's too much. For actually, if you're just gaming, if you're not streaming, if you're not doing any kind of audio editing or video editing. If you're just gaming, you don't need to spend more than fifty, fifty-five, sixty dollars on a good gaming headset. You really don't, you know. Yeah, but I mean, it depends that, on how often comfort, you game and how long you game. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like exactly. for me, if you, I if you want that comfort, you want that quality, go. You got to pay a hundred dollars yeah. or more, you know. And for me, it, it would is. only be useful when I'm actually playing online with other people, because mm -hmm. otherwise, I would just use these because I can. Dude, because I was gonna say you can you can adjust your chat um, audio levels on the on the console itself as well, obviously. But being able to do it on your on your head is so much easier, especially in the heat of the moment. If you're yeah. getting shot at and you can't hear your teammate, you don't want to like pause the application, no. go into your party settings, change the, the the audio mix. No, you just want to lift up your hand and twist your twist your hand. You know, yeah. I think that's smart. Like it's genius. The fact that other like gaming headsets haven't done that but like look other gaming headsets have your little like attachment piece but like mm -hmm. this is nice this is integrated very well into the xbox system which i like and it's i'm kind of sad that sony didn't do that because if sony added they didn't even have to have that have to have the nice dials but if sony even just had buttons that you could click to help adjust the audio mix rather than like pausing the game and then doing it which you can't do with like any kind of competitive game you can't pause it you know no yeah, it's, it's, you gotta. Yeah, so it's. I think it's sick. It looks good though. That's for sure. It looks sexy. Like I would use it. The, the nice thing about these headsets, the one for PlayStation and the one for Xbox, is that they're really nice to use. In general, like even if you're just walking, like if, even if you're just listening to music on your cell phone, you can use this headset, and it's gonna be amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, like right. it has it has multi uses. 
I have yeah, one last forward. thing I they just saw. I don't I don't think I sent it to you. It's, it's not that big a deal. Anyways, it's basically a little update on the Last of Us HBO show. They basically said that the first season is going to be the first game. And that some dialogue okay. and some dialogue will actually be, be plucked from the game itself. But there's also going to be deviations, significant deviations from the storyline um, as well that we'll get to see. So it's interesting, though, that, that the first season is the first game. Okay, is the second game going to be the second season or maybe they'll stretch that out to two seasons that's three seasons then what are you going to do you know after that if if it's successful yeah. enough to, to carry on it just sounds like okay the first stories? season is one is the first game then you're not you know you don't have that much more uh road at least in terms of uh plucking from the actual game hmm that makes sense. That's actually isn't that what we guessed? That's like what we assumed that we're gonna do. Yeah. We assumed that season one was gonna be game one and season two would be game two, yeah. or maybe season two, like or like you said, season two and three. Um, but hey, I'm I'm glad that we're just getting more news about this. I also like that season one is the first game. You know, like that means mm-hmm. that it also means that there's a that means that there's a really good pacing to it. You know, like it's it, it seems like it's not gonna be too fast, not gonna be too slow. You're gonna have like nice character arcs within a season like a lot's gonna happen within a season which is nice it's not like you're gonna have to wait for season two for cliffhangers you know Mm -hmm. so Um, that was just something i I just saw all right uh i know you have a few things yeah there are ones worth talking about the rest aren't i'm just gonna mention so we're gonna talk about the one real quick which is uh final fantasy 7 ever crisis which i didn't never i didn't hear about this and i'm a huge final fantasy 7 fan or just a huge Final Fantasy fan in general. I'm really looking forward to Final Fantasy 16 when it comes out. But until then, it seems like they're releasing something called Final Fantasy 7 Ever Crisis, which after doing some more research, uh, it's a mobile game. It's literally... Uh, so the Final Fantasy 7 remake obviously did really well. So they were like, well, what if we did a Final Fantasy 7 remake, another remake, but this time we made a remake for mobile. And obviously it's like... Uh, how do I explain it? It's not like... It's not... It's literally, it's, oh, it's so cute. I love it. I'm looking at the trailer for it. It's it's like, so when Final Fantasy 15 came out, they released Final Fantasy 15, the mobile version, which is the entire game of Final Fantasy 15, but the character models are like little chibi characters and cute and like that. So it looks like it's the same thing. So Final Fantasy, you're going to be able to do the Final Fantasy 7 remake on mobile, but mm-hmm. all of your character models are like these kind of cuter, smaller chibi versions it looks really it looks really good it actually looks like a very polished playstation one game but on mobile so i'm going to play it for that sake because it looks fun but cons- because it's obviously going to be free to play it's going to have loot boxes i'm not too sure how the loot boxes are going to work maybe there's skins or things like that I'm, I'm not too sure but um yeah there's a final fantasy 7 remake coming out another remake that's the same remake like i said but you're playing from a you're playing from a um not a third person. I want to say fourth person. It's kind of like the bird's eye view that you play a lot of RTS games in, where you're kind of like not straight above, but you're like at uh-huh. an angle way up above. Uh-huh. Um, it's the sorry, the Diablo angle. That's the best way to put it. It's the Diablo angle. Any Diablo, if you've that, ever played any Diablo quarters, game, that kind of three, quarters. that like three quarters, yeah, and and like the wall, and you can see like the walls and the pathways and stuff, yeah. kind of like in Diablo two. Um, so it's like in that style, but like more cartoony, cell shaded. It looks pretty good. Um, let's see. Uh, the current plan is to fit the story of Final Fantasy VII into ten chapters, with the first three covering the Midgar portion of the story. Um, I don't know it looks it looks promising, considering it's on mobile. Like I'm looking I'm looking at the trailer again. It looks smooth, um, and then yeah, obviously the your 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 combat uh, is a lot like the original game. You're not it's not act it's, it's still active turn based, but you're not you know moving around. You're standing still. You're waiting for your turn. You're clicking attack, um, so it's easier to play. And then obviously we've got Final Fantasy VII, the, inter, the the DLC, which is coming out soon. And I believe that they've said now that the DLC is going to be bridging this fi- this version of Final Fantasy with the next one. Because obviously Final Fantasy VII Part Two is going to come out at, at a certain point. And I believe the DLC is uh, is there to, to bridge the two. I could be, ro- I could be wrong, but yeah. Um, uh, Screen Rant made a joke saying that Final Fantasy VII is running out of things to remake because it's, it's like 
it's remaking Final Fantasy VII again. Uh, but it's like it's which is quite funny. There's a lot of jokes about it, but I'm looking forward to it regardless. I think that's going to be quite cool. Some people are mad that it has loot boxes, and then uh, everyone who's angry that it has a loot box, like I was angry that it has loot boxes. I'm pretty sure we're all under the same umbrella that we didn't know it was a mobile game. Now that I know it's a mobile game, loot boxes make sense to me. I don't think that they mm -hmm. could survive as a service without it. Um, I'm not mad anymore, so yeah. Um, okay, a couple small things to mention. Um, uh, you might like... This is just interesting. Uh, Control Developer looks like it's been spilling some tea. Not not too much drama, but they've just been like making some comments that I think is quite nice. Like, Well, not nice, but interesting. Uh, Controller, the developer says that Sony was more, was more ready for next-gen than Microsoft. Like, mm -hmm. talking about its experiences, they said, which is nothing to, like, it just seems like, yeah, Sony was more ready for the next-gen console than Microsoft was. So it's just nice that they said that. And then, oh, they also spoke about how making <laughs> making games for two generations of consoles at once sucks. I could talk about this for, like, half an hour, but that's the best way to sum it up, is that if you're ever developing a game for two different generations of consoles at the same time, it sucks. Which I guess... When you have another developer coming out and saying that it's really difficult and shitty making mm -hmm. a game for two generations, it kind of makes you like feel a bit bad for a, a cyberpunk, you know what I mean? Or CD Projekt Red. Like, mm -hmm. like it is, it's a hell of a undertaking to do like two generations worth of like uh, making sure that it works on two generations, you know? It's, it's got to be tough. Um, okay, we covered the Marvel's Avengers stuff. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 patch 1.2 is going to fix the police response times and driving issues. Um, oh yes, Jedi, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has officially been rated for next-gen consoles. Um, so I suppose we're getting the uh, we're getting a next-gen version, or like, or probably not an, uh, just an upscaled version for PS5 soon. But it finally got uh, rated, so that's going to be happening soon. And then this is not really gaming related, but I thought it was interesting because everyone, I'm sure everyone watching has probably seen or at least is halfway through the Snyder's Cut. And uh, the Snyder's Cut, if you've watched it, has set up a lot of sequels and a lot of spin-offs that's never going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? And apparently one of them was that uh, Superman's son would have become Batman in yeah, Zack Snyder's okay. third Justice League movie, which I was like, that would have been cool. I mean, shoulda, woulda, coulda, it's not going to happen now, but that would have been cool. And yeah, that's that's about all I got really in terms of cool. the smaller stuff. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, I guess before we head off, uh, what have you been playing? I, I told you I've been playing Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Um, I'm just about to finish that. We'll do a spoiler review on that one. Um, and then obviously I've been playing a lot of pickup basketball VR. Um, one because you know <laughs> I'm uh, producing the game, and then two, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, I've been hmm. playing with people online and. We have a Discord uh, channel just just for that as well to get feedback from people, what they like, what they don't like, and trying to, to, to fix that. What have you been work or playing on? Um, recently, I have like a private Discord just for like Valorant mainly. Mm -hmm. And for the longest, like for the past year or two, it's only been like four or five people on the Discord. But it like grew up to like a good like 20, 30 people now, which is not much, but it's like 20, 30 active people and we're playing Valorant like almost every day a lot of valorant a lot of valheim that's mainly what i've been playing um mm -hmm. got really into an star wars um a realm reborn or final fantasy sorry star wars final fantasy 14 the re like if you've played final fantasy 14 the base game you can understand why i confuse it with star wars there's some like elements that kind of feels mm -hmm. like star wars but anyways i've been playing a lot of that and mmo which is just it's just nice to grind away at been gr mainly been grinding away at uh, a lot of voice acting auditions um might might be the the voice for Denver train station, so look look out for that, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, Valorant, Valheim, and then what was it? I, oh yes, because uh, EA Play has come to Xbox. So I've been playing a lot of Need for Speed Heat. I uh, I played it when it first came out, and I didn't enjoy it. And I'm playing it again now, and I'm loving it. I don't know. I think it's just because like I got a better feel for the driving this time. But mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying Need for Speed Heat at the moment, and I think that's about it. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this episode. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Think Hero or Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Revog. Uh, also, check out our Discord channel. Uh, check out our VR game, Pick Up Basketball VR. We got a Discord channel for that and for, for Revog as well. Um, Josh, where can people find you? 
you guys can find me on the Revog Discord channel. Uh, don't don't be shy to at me or message me or add me if you guys have got any questions. Uh, I am actually now finally after like I don't know how long it's been, but uh, I feel happier now. So I think I'm going to be reactivating my social media accounts, cool. um, mainly Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and those things. I've already reactivated my Twitter account, but it has it's not being used yet. But uh, by next week, the next podcast, all my socials should be active, and I should be able to yeah, I should be able to reach me on there as well. All right, guys, uh, until next time, we'll see you guys later. See you later.